Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to do a free background check in the state of Oregon. Uh, to get started, visit OregonPublicRecords.org. I'll have a link in the description. You can click on that or just type it into your browser. On the home page, you will find multiple public record databases. A lot of these can be useful when it comes to background checking, just depending on what type of background check you're doing. That'll be the first part of the video. I'll explain how to use these. And then the second part of the video, we're going to talk about criminal records. And those are probably the most sought after record type uh, when it comes to doing background checks. So that'll be in the second part of the video. So let's jump into, uh, into how to use public records here. So this video is going to be about general background checks, nothing too specific. Just all the resources you have within the state of Oregon, uh, specifically free resources. And it could be used for everyday things, everyday type of life situations. Um, so I'm just going to keep it simple and uh, show you all the official free resources in Oregon here. So, uh, for example, let's say you have a big contract or a big uh, remodeling job you want to do at the house. You're going to put a lot of money into it and you want to make sure you're hiring the right individual for the job. You could, for instance, pull up a contractor license or even look up a business record. And uh, uh, all you got to do is just come in, uh, type in a name, and uh, it'll show you, you know, is does he actually have a license? You know, that that's first thing to check. Maybe he doesn't even have one. Uh, is, is he all paid up? Does he pay on time? Is he organized? Are there, is there any issues with the state? Um, and you can do the same thing with pretty much any, any business. You can type in a business, see how long they've been in business for things like that, like... Uh, you know, if they, if you are doing, say, a big remodeling job and they just registered the business a few months ago, are you necessarily going to trust that individual with a large sum of money and a big project? Maybe not. Maybe yes. Just depends on the situation. So just little things like that. Another big thing to look at would be court, court information. So you could look up the business. You could look up the individual and see, like, are there any financial lawsuits? Maybe, maybe uh, an upset vendor or maybe an unhappy customer is taking them to court for a bad job. You know, you want to, you can, you can check for things like that. And if, you know, if you find something, you might reconsider using that individual. If everything looks legit, if everything looks good, it might give you a peace of mind, uh, handing your money over, uh, and working with a, with a solid company that has shown a, a good track record. So, uh, just little things like that. It could be anything. It could be, checking on, on on maybe new neighbors moved in you want to see what's going on uh, maybe a date it could be uh, any kind of financial dealings business dealings uh, there's so many different ways to uh, to utilize these databases it's uh, it just depends on the situation so let's uh, let's talk about criminal records and when it comes to background checks there are so many different types of background checks out there. And pretty much in every single situation, the criminal aspect, criminal record aspect of the background check is probably going to be the backbone of the whole thing. So that's why we're going to uh, spend a little bit of time on it and see what Oregon has to offer. And this video specifically will focus on free resources. So let's hover over other records and select inmate search. And uh, so a criminal record begins with an arrest. So a local city or maybe a county sheriff's department uh, will arrest an individual and they're going to charge him with a crime and so they're going to go through a booking process they're going to be taken to a jail picture will get taken they'll get identified they'll be charged and then that doesn't necessarily mean that they're guilty yet they still have to see a judge but a court uh, but a, uh, a document is created an arrest document and you're able to research this information typically the local county uh, sheriff's department runs these databases you get a mugshot some personal information and then of course your charges and uh, it's going to be different from county to county some will show you mugshots some won't even have a database like this again it will uh it just depends on how the local sheriff's department decides to uh, uh to run these databases so this is the first step is the arrest and you can access this criminal information uh, for free in uh, most counties uh, next step would be they're either going to post bail, released, or sometimes they'll be kept in jail, but they will have to see a judge. And that's where a lot of the criminal information is captured. So even if they're not guilty, there's still going to be a record. 
and uh, I'm going to go ahead and click. There's a tab here for court records. You want to select that. And as you can see, this uh, Oregon State has uh, multiple courts here. They each do a specific job, anything from the Supreme Court to tax court. If we're looking for criminal information, we want to look for uh, circuit court. It looks like justice court and then the municipal court. Now, the great thing about uh, Oregon is they have statewide a statewide system you pretty much have a free system you can use and then there's a paid system that you can use and <coughs> they uh, they kind of each like for instance the free one is not necessarily going to give you every single record uh, type like domestic um, things small claims uh, you might not necessarily get in the free database but uh, but you still get a, a very large amount. But it, it, it pretty much almost everything is still going to be in in the uh, in the free uh, database. So just just kind of take a look at these and see what each of them uh, kind of offers. But we're going to focus on the free database, and uh, the free database has civil and criminal records, which is uh, plenty of information. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on on the on the link here. And uh, you can you can read the, the uh, what the uh, purpose of this database is and exactly what they what type of information they cover and uh, become like more knowledgeable about it. So when, once you're here, I'm just gonna use a general name here. You want to open up the advanced uh, filter filtering option and uh, and select what uh, information you want. So you could do all locations or you might just want to do by county. Maybe you just want to specifically search for warrants, maybe cases, judgments. I just have all three selected here. Um, uh, types of cases. So since we are kind of focusing on civ on criminal, I select the criminal. You could do all. So if you're doing, because sometimes when you're doing background checks, it's not necessarily going to be related to criminal. Maybe you are looking for financial things, uh, potential lawsuits. Uh, maybe evictions, you know, like there's maybe you want to find out if somebody has been divorced, like things like that. You you could utilize all of these categories. It just depends on why you're doing the background check. I'm just focusing on criminal records for this example, so I'm going to leave that check there. And then just click submit. Now it does take a little bit of time uh, to go through the database. I already did a quick search here. And uh, I uh, pulled. I just used uh, John Smith here, so it gave me quite a few uh, different uh, John Smiths. And the way you identify is you have to. You gotta have a the uh, the year. If you if you if you don't know the birth year, you might have a challenging time if the name is very general. So you gotta. If you got the birth year, you should be able to uh, pinpoint the individual that uh, that you're looking for. So in this case, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and um, work with uh, John Smith, 1975 here. And it looks like they had a, a warrant out and then seven cases. So this gives you a history. So it uh, looks like he's got a history from 1996 all the way to 2017. And then you have your uh, individual cases. So you can research each of these individual cases. It looks like multiple counties here. And then if you want to look at the warrant, you can just click on warrant. And then um, looks like it was issued in 2017. You can click on this uh, on the uh, warrant number and look a little bit deeper into that. So I'm just going to take a look at one of these cases just to show you what it looks like. All right, so here we go. Uh, file date uh, 2017. It is a closed case. It was a felony. And then you have the parties uh, to the case here. Um, you have the charges. So there was three different charges here. As you can see, uh, the disposition of events, convicted in all three. And then you have your sentence information. So uh, incarceration for 180 days at the county jail for uh, the count one and two. And then uh, you have another one also incarceration for 364 days. So and then you have some some fees that uh, had to be paid. Um, you have your, uh, some more details here. Obviously it looks like it's, uh, again, incarceration, 30 months, uh, sentencing details, 
again, fees. So there, there's, as you can see, this is a, I'm not going to get into every single detail. As you can see, it's the, the records are, are pretty detailed. So, and uh, as you saw, I did not have to type in a credit card. I didn't even have to create an account. I just had to know where the database was and how to research it appropriately and how to read the actual report. So uh, that's going to be a big one. It captures uh, quite a few, uh, pretty much everything. And uh, what's great is, as you can see, it actually went back all the way to 96 and it goes even further. I think I've seen it go back as far as the 80s and uh, actually even, I think even further back than that. I mean, your typical background check is going to maybe go back seven years, 10 years. Um, the fact that you can pretty much go back as far as the system goes um, is pretty uh, incredible. So uh, with that said, let's move on to the next phase. And that would be after, uh, so they're pronounced guilty or not guilty. If they're guilty, maybe they'll pay a fine. Sometimes they'll do some time. And so that's another record you can check out, inmate search back to that page if it's under 12 months they'll typically spend that time at the local jail so you would research that information at the jail record or at the jail database if it's over 12 months it's going to be in the prison and the prison facilities are um, managed by the Oregon Department of Corrections and they have their own database that you can use and uh, again it's uh, a free system it, no account no credit card needed you can just uh, select an individual and uh, oh won't let me do that you have a picture ident personal identifying information um, it looks like uh, there has been uh, multiple uh, multiple offenses looks like they've been uh, they were in 1988 and then and then again in 1991 so it kind of gives you a timeline if the individuals have been in and out of uh, of the uh, Department of Corrections system. And again, this database is free to use. Uh, one more thing to consider when it comes to criminal background checking is also researching the sex offender registry. And this is also, if I can get through this CAPTCHA here. And this again is a, uh, a free system. It's statewide. You can research by location. So if you wanted to check maybe around your property or around a particular location or you can uh, research by by name if you want to look into a specific individual so uh, there are your options and you have quite a few of them um, anything from uh, using public record information when it comes to maybe hiring somebody to maybe do a remodeling job for you to a babysitter to the neighbors to just having a business deal with somebody to checking somebody's criminal past financial uh court record past uh licenses there's so many different databases you can use when it comes to background checking um and then when in, in terms of criminal background checks um you know we started at uh we were able to research arrest records for free court records for free prison records for free and then the sex offender registry for free so you have quite a few options uh, in the state of Oregon. Uh, with that said, there is another thing you should consider, and that's the name search box on top. Now, this is not a free search, but it's an awesome tool. Um, it covers uh, public records, court records, property information, criminal information, financial records, things like bankruptcies, potentially uh, financial lawsuits, uh, other things, uh, private databases, things like cell phone numbers, but previous addresses so it's it's pretty extensive there's some databases in there that i'm not even mentioning just because there are so many but it also pulls records not just from within the state of oregon but also from outside from other states so kind of giving you like a nationwide multi-state look into someone's historic past and then it compiles all this information into a single search system so it's almost instantaneous you'll quickly figure out if they have uh, what you're looking for so uh, something to look into uh, another cool aspect of the whole uh, looking into different states and previous addresses is let's say someone has a, a criminal past in Kentucky or Utah and they move to Oregon. If you're just doing research at the county level or the state level in Oregon, you're not necessarily going to catch what happened in Kentucky or Utah so or any other state. So it kind of gives you an opportunity to cover more bases, get a little more information and uh, 
you know, be more informed. So with that said, visit OregonPublicRecords.org and uh, get started on your free background check in the state of Oregon. Thank you.